Hello and welcome Twitch chat and YouTube to a vintage league we're, we're testing. I'm, I, I think the plan this week, and I don't know if it's an actual feasible plan, is I am going to try to stream every single day leading up to the showcase. Now, will I actually accomplish that? <laughs> Maybe, but that's the plan. I want to stream a bunch of test le testing leagues before the showcase, and um, that's how I'm going to try to do it. So... This time I did something different. Last time I had I had said, "Oh, I'm going to try this certain deck." This time I put four decks onto Twitter and I said, "Pick which deck we're playing tonight." Um, the four decks that I chose to put on Twitter were uh, Combo Oath, Control Oath, Hollow Vine, and Dredge. Swap those. Uh, and Hollow Vine won out over the other options. Now. Looking back, maybe I should not have put Control Oath and Combo Oath as different options. However, they are different decks, so I, I mean, it kind of made sense to me. Either way, that's what we're going to play tonight. We're going to play a League of Hollow Vine. Um, this is a Bazaar of Baghdad deck, a mulligan to Bazaar of Baghdad deck, hence Serum Powder. You need a Bazaar of Baghdad for your deck to function. Basically, you play all the free spells that have ever been printed. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Uh, and, and try to basically tempo out your opponent. Uh, and you can also bury them in card advantage, which is always fun. So basically, your bazaar can get offset by cards like Squee and Master of Death, which return from the graveyard in your upkeep. So you can, uh, you know, turn this into one one Squee makes this a faithless looting, two Squees, and now you're now you're cooking. Um, you're playing free creatures, Hollow One, and the eight Root Wallas to trigger your Venge Vines. Uh, you have Noxious Revival as a way to pick up your bazaars after they've been wastelanded, and then you have many free counter spells and free pseudo counter spells in Force of Vigor, Force of Negation, Force of Will, Mind Break Trap, Mental Misstep, uh, Chalice of the Void, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, like I said, the only, like I said in the beginning, uh, before the stream started, the only major change that this list has from stock Hollow Vine list is it's opting not to play Cradle in the main. The reason you used to play Cradle in the main is because one of the major players in the metagame was Golos Shops, the prison um, workshop variants that played main deck Tabernacle, um, made it so you definitely wanted to have access to multiple more mana sources. However, Golos Shops has basically disappeared from Vintage in being replaced by uh, both Ravager Shops and then aggressive Null Rod Shops. With Golos Shops exiting the metagame, I don't see a super pivotal need to play cradle in the main and that's just a theory i don't know if that's true but that's what we're going to try tonight so what this allows us to do is play four of all of our cards that are not restricted uh and we have one extra slot which we are flexing a fury into the main deck mm, sideboard is mostly graveyard hate with 10 pieces of graveyard hate uh some creature hate with some more furies some guys cradle against probably decks that are taxing wasteland shops etc uh, and we have one snapback to deal with a Sphinx of the Steel Wind or some other Tinker Fatty. I don't know if snapback is the best choice. I've seen Maze of Ith, I've seen snapback. Um, we'll have to, you know, test it out and see how it goes. But this is a very straightforward, almost stock list. There's not a super large amount of room to play around. Like, there's like three or four cards that you can, like, you can trim a Nox Survival. You can trim a Mind Break Trap in some metagames. Um, you can obviously trim a Fury from the main. So you have like a couple flex slots, but you don't have a huge amount of flex slots in this deck. It's pretty much you play the cards that make your deck work, and um, you have to play them well. And you have to dodge hate, and so we'll see if we can do both of those tonight. Okay, here we go. Now we're playing round one of this Vintage League. We're up against uh, an opponent who has let us know that we are on a, they are on a Oath Tinker list um, because they were just in the stream, and now they're not. So we got even ground to start up our round one match. I've got a bazaar and counter magic. Yeah, it's a keeper. Yeah, yeah. Like I always said, I was just telling chat, I'm probably going to play an oath deck, a PO deck, or a bazaar deck. I don't really see a lot of other good choices. So. So here I didn't actually hit another free spell, another free creature for my vine. So I'm going to put my vine away, but I'm not going to pitch my root walla. Instead, 
I think what I'm going to do is just pitch second Bazaar and Wasteland. This gives me the most options. Let's me hold on to a green card for a Force of Vigor if my opponent is truly on some kind of Oath Tinker deck. Lets me, lets me keep my blue cards. Lets me have a Wasteland for like a Saga. Uh, and we can still bring back Vengevine if we find a creature next turn. Of course, not hitting um, a Squee or a Master of Death or a Root Waller or a, a Hollow One made, made it so that Bizarre draw was not very good. Uh, but that sometimes happens. You have to keep your cards that you have when you have a Bizarre in your opener hand. Okay, still looking for the same things I just said. We hit another Vengevine, but no Root Walla. I'm just going to ditch the same cards as last time. And will I play out this Wasteland? What does playing out this Wasteland do for me? I don't think it does anything for me, right? I could have, of course, kept a Bazaar and gone for, like, Bazaar Bazaar. But the problem with Bazaar Bazaar is I don't have... Um, squeeze to offset it, so it'd be going all in, where I wanted to, you know, be able to hold up maybe, like, if this turn I had drawn a blue card for Force of Negation and a, a Root Walla, I would have returned Vengevine and had double counter spell. Not much I can really do. I think I'm just gonna hold on to this Wasteland as an extra card to pitch, rather than play it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a really strong bizarre player would have. Yeah, I really do don't want this to resolve, but we'll see what happens. I guess. Looks like fluster plus oath. Oh, this is the breach tinker oath deck. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so we don't have to return our venge vibes. We can continue holding. Um, if their play is the Sun Titan like it was before, I'm not sure how much we care. So I, like, I hit the, I hit the Root Wallas here, but is that actually good? Playing two Root Wallas, hitting my opponent to 11, they trigger Oath. If it's Sphinx, we lose. If it's Grizzlebrand, we lose. If it's Archon, we may win. If it's Sun Titan, it depends on what they mill. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to mill over here. I believe the last time I saw them, they were on um, like a Brian Kelly style 2 Oath, 2 Breach, 1 Sphinx, 1 Sun Titan. Yeah. They're on a very like a very old school version of Oath Breach. It's actually kind of unlucky for me to, for them to have hit Oath because there's only two Oaths in their deck. I'm actually not going to bring this back because I don't believe I'll win if I do so. I think I'm just going to try to find a, a, a Vigor first. If it hits Sun Titan like with very few cards, then I, I could probably win by doing this. But if it hits Sphinx, I just instantly lose. So... And my opponent's not playing any Forbidden Orchards. They're playing zero Forbidden Orchards. So, what the hell? Okay. Uh, apparently they're playing Jace the Mind Sculptor. So the problem here is if I draw two and discard three, I don't actually have a good avenue. So I kind of think I'm out of time. I just have to go face place. But now they can bounce a Vengevine and they have an extra blocker. So maybe my waiting was too bad and I was supposed to just hope they hit Sun Titan and use my Noxus Revival. Maybe I can hit a third Vengevine off of this draw. I don't know. Looks pretty bad for me from here. Uh, okay. We're gonna just go for it. Uh, Root Walla, Root Walla. Do I want to get rid of Chalice? No, I probably want to keep... Well, if they're going for Breach, maybe I'll just Chalice on zero.
you want to play both root wallas and end step. That's not a terrible idea either. I don't think I've ever done that before. Is that how that works? Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever done that before. I probably should have done that. No, what does that change? That doesn't change anything, right? I'm still getting one hit in. I get two extra damage in, so I could have hit them for 10 down to 9. Maybe I was supposed to do that on my opponent's end step. I don't think I've ever done that before, but it's a pretty cool idea. All right, I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to go in now and just try to race and hope they don't hit Sphinx. Like I said, I can't beat at Sphinx, but it's a 50-50 on Sphinx versus Sun Titan, so... I do get to play a hollow one this way, which is not nothing, but it's probably not enough. Like, I'm not allowed to attack this Jace. Am I? I don't think so. I have a sinking feeling this is not going to be good enough, but... I guess they could have force, but... Like, a problem with Revival is if they Sun Titan, like, back a, a Underworld Breach, then putting it on top of the library isn't doing much difference. Okay, so they had a Force still after Brainstorming. Hit the Chalice. Okay. It is what it is. I can't be a Sphinx. So 50-50 on a coin flip on losing. I lost, of course. They also have an Ancient Grudge in the main. Uh, okay, I'm going to concede because I can't beat this. Yeah, it was just really unfortunate that my opponent found Oath of Druids and I didn't return these Vengevines earlier. Like, I had, what, Vengevine Root Wallow since my opener and I just couldn't find the second source. Sometimes it'd be like that. Alright, obviously Fury is not very good. Snapback is probably good. The question is, do we want to play some amount of Graveyard Hate for their Breach combo? Um, probably. We probably do. Let me look at this deck again. So this deck is a Tinker Citadel, Tinker Sphinx, two Breach, two Oath, a pile of Planeswalkers. Yes, very Brian Kelly style. Uh, and then it's going to bring in Rav Trap, Soul Guide Lantern, two Tabernacles. Okay. All right. So I need to bring in Gaia's Cradle and possibly like Surgical instead of Revivals, which we don't need. We don't really need Waste and Strip Mine Effects either. I don't know how many we're allowed to bring out. I've never actually boarded those out, I don't believe, but I could theoretically not play them, though they do help the tempo game plan. It's not like my opponent is playing... I mean, it's not, it doesn't really dunk on Oath. I don't really agree with that statement. I guess it hits Sagas. That's fair. Uh, my opponent, I don't really think I want to cut Mind Break Trap. I think I just want to cut Noxious Revival because I don't care. They're not affecting, they're not, they're not attacking my land. Blue Count is important. Like, you can trim on Mind Break Trap. Mind Break Trap is not necessary. But, like, Fury hits nothing. I guess it doesn't hit Planeswalkers does hit Planeswalkers. Eh, that's not really a winning line. I think I just want to bring these in for Tabernacle, this in for Sphinx, and some Surgicals. Hey, like, I understand what you're saying, but I didn't draw those cards. Like, I cast Force of Legation, and they countered it, and I lost. Like, I have to draw the right cards for that to be true. And the way, the way I've been playing recently, that hasn't been the case. Uh, yeah, I did, I did, I did keep the waste. This hand is only good if they don't have turn one tabernacle, though. I mean, at least I have some backup plans with my master of deaths. So I can play around tabernacle here by going, so I want to keep one master for enforce of negation. Um, I just try to figure out how many hollow ones I play. And... I think the answer is I just go all in because I have a master. No, I can't be right. Maybe I just play two root wall as an A hollow one. Um, 
Like, I have a strip mine to answer a tabernacle. I don't have to play all my hollow ones here. I think I'm just going to play double root wallow, one hollow one. Sure, but I I don't like your initial statement. I don't agree with. I don't agree that hollow one dunks oath. I've had great success playing oath into hollow one. So I don't know. That's my problem with your original statement. Why not all in? Because I believe we'll be extremely disadvantaged if my opponent plays turn one tabernacle, and we know my opponent is drawing has two tabernacles in their deck now. I think playing all in is just silly. Why would you do that? Why would you expose yourself to an, another way to win when you have like like I'm really fucking good at this game. How about we how about we how about we listen to what I'm trying to say? <laughs> like this 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 chat. This is why I did what I did. This exact thing that just happened. <sighs> Lucky guess. Uh, if I was really good, I would have played zero. I don't know if zero d doesn't really make too much sense because you do need to pressure your opponent. Yeah, I de that is definitely a true statement. I could have played strip mine on turn. Wait, no, didn't I draw strip mine off of my bizarre activation? I'm pretty sure I drew strip mine off my bizarre activation. That might not be true. I don't remember. Okay, so yes, we could not have played Strip Mine Pass. <laughs> okay, so in this instance, I get to pitch Bizarre, uh, Master, Master. I don't actually think I want to pitch Vigor. I think I'm going to pitch one of my counter spells. And then I'm going to go... Do I want to pitch my Vigor? No, it's probably not true. Because I can bring back Masters for all of these counter spells. Probably fine to pitch vigor and play hollow one and strip mine. And I don't want to use strip mine right away. I want to wait until their end step so they can't play a second tabernacle. I, of course, could always not strip mine tabernacle and just pay for my hollow one. But I think that's worse. So it does help me play around the other. Oh my God. Are they going to go like oath with pyroblast backup? I mean, I, either way, that happens. Uh, sure. There was no sequence that let me have double force, so I feel like this was I was priced into exactly this play. <laughs> I'm kind of glad that the tabernacle got played just so I could show you what I was talking about. <laughs> it is not always correct to just play all of your zero cost threats on turn one when you play this deck. And I think there is, like, obviously we didn't have the strip mine in our hand, but we definitely, if we did start with the strip mine in our hand, we definitely could have played strip mine pass. So they have brainstorm, fetch off of lotus for a green source, play an oath with, okay, I mean, I wish I had mind break trap here. Counter spell with mind break trap back up? What? We just play hard cast gush? I guess that is a thing that did happen, right? Um... Yeah, sure. You got it. I think I'm going to just kill this tabernacle. I'm not 100% sure on... Yeah, I think I'm just going to kill this tabernacle. All right, bring back my masters. Wasteland, nice. That plays around second tabernacle. All right, nice. I picked up some more blue cards. I guess that's an interesting choice between... I guess I can just get rid of negation, right? Because I'll have a force and a negation, and I get to keep the options open for snapback misstep. Not that I think I... I'm never going to use snapback, right? I'm always going to want to counter. So I think I'm just making given it, this negation makes sense. I play this wasteland, and I don't use it because I want to protect myself from second tabernacle. I think protecting myself from second tabernacle is better than hitting their tropical when they just gushed. So this is a really nice uh, example of how to use Master of Deaths to turn Bizarre Baghdad into card advantage. 
I will not allow that to happen if possible. Pyroblast. Pyroblast off of Ruby is absolutely big game. Force. Okay, I'll negate. Top. Okay, one card left. Okay. Interesting. Pretty decent draws, I think. I don't think I'll need Mind Break Trap. I mean, I'm going to keep Mind Break Trap in my hand. I'm just trying to figure out if I want to go Force Trap Master or Force Trap Chalice. I think Force Trap Chalice is fine. I think, like, the turn that I would have wanted Mind Break Trap was last turn. And Chalice on zero still has utility against uh, a Breach combo. It's interesting that I've drawn so many blue cards that I've never had to use these masters to pitch to force because that's a very common thing. But I've just drawn kind of all blue cards. Okay, Saga. I might have to Wasteland Saga. They have a lot of artifacts in play. Is this is a Jace the Mind Sculptor or just a Tinker. This is a Dig Through Time, zero cards in hand. Technically, I don't actually have to counter this. But it keeps their top in check. And I think it's fine. I really don't like countering Dig when I can help it, but I think this is an opportunity to counter Dig that looks pretty strong. Um, I don't want to activate this bazaar in my upkeep, uh, because I do still have double master giving me card advantage. I am running out of life total, though. Alright, there's the squee. So, I guess, like, just kind of want to draw, like, Force Wasteland? Or something like that? Okay. Oh, I can't keep them both, though. Hmm. So maybe I should not have asked for Force Wasteland. All right, I think I'm okay with this hollow one getting tabernacled. I'll just keep force. Yeah. Okay. I did ask for force wasteland and I received force wasteland. So I cannot I can't, I can't be too upset. So obviously I do expose myself here to second tabernacle, but we should be able to rebuild with Double Squee and Avenge Vine, so I'm not too concerned. Second Saga is definitely a reason to want to have kept Wasteland. But it might just be too late for them. If I can play two free spells here, it's lethal. Yeah, look at that, two free spells. I should preface, I should say two free creatures, yes. Two free creatures. All right, that game went really well. That was a textbook um, Hollow Vine game where I have a bazaar in my seven, I have counter magic, I have squeeze, I have wastelands, I play around tabernacle, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. I still like the way we're set up. Maybe Surgical Extraction is worse than a different card here, but I don't hate the idea of Surgical Extraction over things like Noctis Revival. They're doing kind of similar things. 
I guess you theoretically could play Leyline in the Void. But... I don't know. It's, like, tough. Like, they have two Breaches. So, it technically, Breach and Tinker are their main plans. But they don't need to do either of those. Okay. I'm gonna, re I'm gonna rebuy like this. Maybe Surgical is not very good. That could be something I could think could say. Well, I think Leyline against Breach used to be a great card, but now that Breach has Saga, I don't like it as much. All right, I mean, this hand is a bizarre way from being fantastic, so we need to go find a bizarre. This hand does not have a bizarre. It's a kind of a rough powder as well. I think I'm still supposed to powder this hand, but I'm going to be very sad about powdering this hand. I don't really know what I'm allowed to... Uh, I think I want to keep one of the... Maybe the hollow one? I don't have enough experience in this to know what the right answer here is. If this was a 7, I may have not powdered it. But as a six, I think I'm supposed to. And if I'm going to get rid of like so many root wallas, it makes Venge Vines worse anyways. So putting Hollow One back in the deck makes sense. Uh, I mean, I'll easily powder this away. And then I guess we're mulliganing anyways. Sure. And I guess we're mulliganing anyways. It's pretty unlucky. I guess we're mulliganing anyways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess we're mulliganing anyways. There's only 41 cards in my deck. <laughs> only, <laughs> I, I mean, I, not, that's not true. There's only uh, 48 cards in my deck. All right. Well, I guess we, uh, yeah, we lost. <laughs> Uh, it's very unlucky for this to have happened with the powders, but it's okay. Uh, sometimes it does, it does be like that. Probably should have. I also am putting two masters on the bottom of my library, which is bad. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to put this root wall up first. Whatever. I don't really care anymore. Uh... Well, you're 99%, like, with Dredge, you're 99% to hit a Bazaar. It's not really the same with this. That's a fucking good draw. That's, that's, that is the single best draw in my entire deck. I will, uh, I will accept. Watch us win this game. That would be pretty cool. I don't have high expectations, but I know, could happen, I guess. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, I am historically unlucky. This is true, if that's what you're saying. Good God. Turn to Jace. That one time? Are you saying one of my PTQ wins wasn't luck? I think I'll take that. Second, second squeeze is very good. No, Jace is not. Well, Jace is more playable than it used to be because Pyroblast is kind of on a down tick. However, Jace is a little bit power crept out of the format, if you had to ask me. Costing blue, blue, and four mana is quite a lot. I'm going to guess I feel sad if they just play an oath here, but I don't know. I have to play a hollow one, right? Are they going to dack my hollow one? Sure. Sure. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
Oh, Merchant School for Ancestral? Yeah. I mean, those are good things. We drew, like, as about as good as we could. Like, <laughs> we drew double squee immediately into hollow one land. Like, we, we drew the best we possibly could. <laughs> so I'm not upset. Because it, it just had to be that way. I'm going to start churning through my deck and see if it works. But fortunately, we lost three Root Wallas and a Vengevine. So, not great. They can't play an Oath on us now. <laughs> I mean, I guess they can. Doesn't matter that much. But they're not even beating us with Dredge Hate, which is the worst part. Or, like, Graveyard Hate. They're just beating us with the Xerox engine, which shouldn't really happen because our Xerox engine is kind of better than theirs for the most part. But mulliganing to one does do that to you. I'm going to play it out, though. I'm intrigued to see what we can pull together. I didn't think we would fail to find Bizarre so much when we powdered two sixes. That's a lot of cards. But it's just math. It happens sometimes. Sure. Um... Sure, I will hit Ancestral Re uh, Merchant. Uh, this sucks. Um, if they have a single additional mana, then oh, they do have a single additional mana. So I have to hit Merchant Scroll or they get Brain Freeze. Okay. Okay, it didn't matter. Uh, no, they're not. Actually, it's two mana, right? Sorry, not a single additional mana, two mana. Oh, they have Brain Freeze in their hand. <laughs> okay, yeah, you got me. Yeah, no worries. Well, losing to a blue deck is not how I envisioned this league to start, but that is the perils of playing Bizarre sometimes. You lose to yourself. All right, let's try this again. Uh, hopefully, bizarre. Yeah, that's that's much better. I mean, sometimes you mold to one, and sometimes you have hands like this. Watch us hit a hollow one. Ready? Hollow one. Oh, that one's pretty good too. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then my opponent died. It's just a turn two kill. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I assume my opponent can seize without showing me anything. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. That's that's Hollow Vine. Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, I did draw pretty well after um, after the Mulligan. I drew like Squee into Squee and had some chances. Uh, I'm just gonna submit this, but maybe minus this and plus this. That seems reasonable to me. I mean, it's very similar to going like Mana Crypt Island Tinker, right? Hey, I would I I prefer to describe it as outskilling my opponent. As you can see in that game one, I made a few complex decisions and arrived at the perfect line in which my opponent died and I was able to 
grab the victory in game one. You should all pay attention and learn <laughs> that <laughs> the most important thing, keep a good seven. Obviously, I think the more important thing is playing like we did in, in game two of last round where you, you know, correctly evaluate what is going to lose you the game, turn one tabernacle and figure out a way to play around said turn one tabernacle and then get rewarded by it actually happening. But that's only slightly good in comparison to keep a seven that kills your opponent on turn two that has also has two mind break traps. <laughs> All right, this hand doesn't have a bazaar. Try again. This hand does have a bazaar. Keep. Question now becomes, I mean, I guess it doesn't become anything. I guess the powder just goes away. I was going to say, what are we putting away? But then that wasn't actually necessary. Ooh, Urza Saga. I think I'm going to let them have a trigger here. See if they uh, extend into a vigor. <laughs> Yes, yes. Now a good question is, do I hit Time Vault or do I hit Sapphire? I like playing Risky Business Game. Nah, I should just hit Time Vault. Cool. Nice land. Oh, I did get rid of a creature that would have let me play Hollow uh, Venge Vine off the top here, which is definitely unfortunate. I could just draw another one, though. Didn't draw another one. Not bad, though. I think I'm pretty likely to win. Like, there's a chance that if I uh, let them keep Time Vault and they play a second Saga, I lose. No, I, I think it's actually the opposite. I think it's more greedy to hit Sapphire. I think it's actually a more greedy play to hit Sapphire. We have some interesting choices on this one as well. Because I think there's some upside to holding Master of Death Force of Negation. And I don't really think there's a... Uh, so I could technically pitch Wasteland, activate Bazaar, and pitch Strip Mine. It just does set us up pretty poorly against another Saga. I could, of course, just play Wasteland and pass. I could play Strip Mine and pass. I kind of want to hold Hollow One to return my Venge Vine. I'm going to outdraw my opponent. I think I'm just going to play Strip Mine and pass. I'm going to continue outdrawing my opponent with Squee. I'm holding my Hollow One for Revenge Vine. And I'm holding up Negation. And yeah, I think this looks fine. Yeah, I, I if I had to do it 10 times, I'm pretty sure I would destroy Time Vault Saga at least 9 of those times. <laughs> I think the biggest thing for me is if they played a second Saga on the next turn, there's a chance I could lose to just the Saga getting key. And, like, like I, obviously I drew Wastelands, so it didn't actually come, become that way. <laughs> Got him. Unless you have Force, I guess. If you had Force, I feel like they would have hit on my Vigor. Uh, okay, cool. Play well, get rewarded. Yes. Yes. Draw. Activate. Pitch, pitch, pitch. Do we activate again? Probably not. Well. Hmm. I don't think so. Well, the problem is I have to discard a force of will 
and it doesn't let me draw a double hollow one. Yeah, I'm just going to strip mine them and pass. This is like the true terror of any blue deck when they play against hollow vine is when you just have a bazaar that's just drawing you two cards every turn and I have them way more counter spells than they do. Wow, the main deck soul guide lantern. Well, I have to hope they don't have a fluster storm here, I think. That is not something I expected to have to play around. Uh, it's pretty bad for me, though. This is game two? Well, I mean, okay, yeah, it is game two. I forgot about game one. To be fair, they probably also have this in their main. Because they're playing Urza Saga. I mean, it's not it's not guaranteed, but it's a, it's a thing that could happen. They probably feel pretty good about that getting countered. Like, now they have some pretty reasonable tinker outs. Alright, so this turn... Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. So I can go... Squee, squee. I might just pitch the second bazaar. It's kind of crazy how I haven't found another creature to get this Vengevine back. I probably would have won this game a lot earlier if I had just played a hollow one. But I think I'm just going to pitch the second bazaar, hold on to my counter spells, uh, wasteland their underground sea, hold open counter spell Noxious Revival. Like I'm, I, 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 it's okay if I play a conservative line because I'm going to outdraw my opponent. Like is this Tinker? Oh shit! <laughs> I like it. Not many people are playing Mentor anymore. It's a good one. I don't have a counter for that. I will probably put a land back on top of their library though next turn. Uh, a little late there, Force. Okay, so put this, this, and this. And then go this. Oh, I fucking... Uh, I f 2 It was a weird cadence. Uh, and I'm going to put the underground, uh, the island back on top of their top of their library here. So now they're going to draw an island for a turn. Hopefully they'll have no spells, but I have a bunch of counter spells. Obviously, I wanted to play both of these hollow ones pre-combat to get an extra four damage in. Uh, but I just hit F2 in a weird cadence, so. Shouldn't be a big deal. We'll see what happens. Could definitely cost us. If they hit a pretty strong series of draws, maybe. I did get punished pretty hard by not playing a hollow one early in this game. I definitely could have. I thought that it would make sense to hold hollow one to bring back Vengevine whenever I drew one of my eight root wallas or three other hollow ones. That didn't really come to fruition, but... Alright, well, I mean, I don't think that the Mentor is getting them out of this game now, as I have infinite counter magic. Swords to Plowshears. Interesting. So is this Esper Tinker, maybe? Haven't, you don't see too much Esper Tinker anymore. Just like Saga Tinker. I found the deck to be pretty clunky. So I can counter their one spell. I don't have exactly lethal yet, but they'll have to jump with their mentor. And then I have counter for the next spell. So yeah, we, we have this game locked. Yeah, just a really strong showing of exactly why... Hollow Vine is good into a blue meta. You just have these uncounterable game ones where you can kill them on turn two with counter spells. And then this game, I just, I outdrew my blue opponent by a huge margin because I had access to Squee and Master of Death. So I, that that's just a very like textbook blue matchup, what you kind of expect to see. Okay, round three, we're up against Tanaguchi. Typically a blue magician... This hand is nice. Definitely a keeper. Uh, let's see what they're up to.
Okay, that's interesting. I don't know exactly what that means. Maybe Doomsday? My favorite vintage deck in general at the moment. I really enjoy playing my Oath deck, and I really like PO still, even though I you know I meme on PO a lot. It's still my still my baby. Those are probably the two that I am the most interested in. Interesting. Um uh, all the ones that I have that don't play Saga. <laughs> uh, I have, a, obviously, a special sweet spot for that. Um... That's fine. I don't care. I'm going to play... So the way I'm going to sequence this is Hollow One, Chalice, Hollow One, Hollow One. Because I think the Chalice is more important than a Hollow One resolving. But the first Hollow One is very good bait. I think my opponent is Doomsday, and I think our matchup is pretty good. So I yeah, I baited the days with a hollow one. I guess I'm gonna play a second hollow one then. See if I can bait a force. Alright, well now I'm gonna play a chalice. And I'm gonna play another. I mean, that was like a very insane turn one as well. I played a league off stream with my Pernicious Deed Oath deck, and I, I went 2 1 1 2 in all of the matches. Uh, for like a 3-2 finish. So I played like the maximum number of games and it was grueling. And I had a lot of ups and downs and I'm not exactly sure if it was the deck or me. I'm not sure how good it is right now in the meta game. It was so good for the weekend we won the PTQ because it just perfectly fit against what was happening. But I'm not sure how good it is right now. It's something I need to evaluate. So this is really bad for my Doomsday opponent. I have too much free power too quickly. I have counter spell. I have all four hollow ones. I have all four hollow ones. Okay. I wonder... Yeah, playing second hollow one just means it's lethal, so I'm just gonna not keep the Noxious Revival and put lethal on the table. Also, they can't play Black Lotus, which makes things difficult. They missed a land drop, which is going to be annoying for that. Or maybe they didn't miss a land drop. Yeah, they missed a land drop. So. If they have a Force, they kind of have to use it on this Hollow One or else... Well, they don't have to use it on the Hollow One. They could have, like, Dark Ritual, Doomsday Force, Ancestral. That would win the game. Okay. They have three cards in hand, and they're Mystical Tutoring. So they have to have exactly Dark Ritual, Doomsday, Ancestral, but they can't win through Chalice. Unless I don't know. They are... Oh, they're going to go for Consult. Okay, that's a good way to do it. Wait a second, they don't have a land drop though, right? Or maybe because the days they picked up a land? I thought they were on the play though. All right, I'm just gonna just counter this in case they have like an oracle in their bottom two and they go land oracle. I guess I think that's their out. Pretty sure that's their out, right? They're gonna or they're gonna console for oracle and have an oracle in the bottom two. All right, we had a great draw versus Doomsday. Not a great draw, maybe because we could have had more counter magic, but in terms of the number of hollow ones, that is a large number of hollow ones. All right, against Doomsday, I'm going to bring in Surgical Extraction and Ghost Quarter. And I'm going to board out Fury. Maybe I'm not going to board in Ghost Quarter. I usually like the Wasteland Underground Sea Surgical Extracted line. Maybe I'll just board out one Vigor. I actually, Noxious Revival is like a worse than Surgical. Probably just like that. I guess I could theoretically bring in Ghost Quarter for a Revival. Not like super thrilled with that idea. Though they might fetch basics, so maybe it's fine. Eh, I'm not really thrilled with that idea. I think just the Fury and the Noxious for two Surgicals makes sense to me. 
Yeah, I would agree. We're mostly pre-boarded, though I think Surgical is good. Has Shuffle Pile. You can hit all the Doomsdays. You can hit all the Underground Seas. A couple of pretty good hits in that category. Uh, it's a Powder Hand. And the Keeper. No Counter Magic, but I have a Chalice. Uh, I would actually th say they probably are unlikely to play Deep Analysis because Vintage versions do not play Deep Analysis Consider. I think they're just playing a um, they're just playing a Consider as a as a flex slot. So we do have a Vigor for the Leyline of the Void, but they are a heavy Counter Magic deck. Oh, we're just going all in. Shit, that's not good for me. Okay, yeah, turn one, <laughs> turn one, leyline, dark ritual, doomsday. Uh, we'll see if they play around wasteland, chalice of the void. Though there's a possibility they don't build a pile. Tanaguchi is a reasonable doomsday pilot, but not a discover N or a Bart or a Max or a Sing Pan Man. So. We'll see what happens. I could, of course, figure out exactly which eight cards they have left, but I'm playing a league and I don't feel like doing that. So I'm just not going to. I think the best play for me is not to play a hollow one, but to play Wasteland Chalice. And then I can Vigor the Ley Line if I want to. I don't even know if that's actually going to be any good. Playing Wasteland first so I don't get my Chalice dazed. So this cuts off their non, uh, their non Lotus wins. And this should cut off their Lotus wins if it resolves. In that case, we actually are in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, yeah, actually Discover Ed has pretty similar ratings to um Bart DM4X, DM4X uh in terms of doomsday and win rates overall. All right, so my opponent did have turn 1 Dark Ritual Doomsday Leyline of the Void. Uh so we probably are in rough shape here. <laughs> but uh what's a guy to do, I guess? And by in rough shape, I mean we're dead. Yeah, so my opponent is showing why people play Doomsday. <laughs> Brutal. Savage. Correct. I only needed one Force of Will to probably win this game, because I would suspect my opponent doesn't have a second Underground Sea. So if my hand contained a Force of Will, I think Force of Will Wasteland Chalice would have beat my opponent. Um, however, that was not the case. But it was pretty close. It was close. You don't really need things like careful study and vintage because you just have so much more powerful cards. I mean, my hand didn't, didn't have no interaction. My hand had two pieces of interaction. Also had a vigor for a lay like My hand was good. My hand just wasn't good enough. Which is, you know... It happens. That's a good one. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is hope they have no ley line because it's so good if I hope they have no ley line. I think I just bottom vigor and hope they have no ley line. Because then I have force and a hasty threat and six power. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna hope they have no ley line. Sometimes lucky. I I think that's a calculated risk. I think the chance of not hitting um, Avenge, like getting this Avenge into play, is super high. I mean, 
<laughs> Eat my words there pretty fast, didn't I? That's pretty funny. Okay, well. Hope we don't get tabernacled, I guess. Yeah. I'm just going to play it all and make him have it. Yeah, this can get forced. I don't give a shit. I uh, don't care. You're a powerful wizard to get a trophy with eight casts. That deck is really bad. Um, I don't... There's nothing that I would play after drawing here. So, I guess a hollow one. So I think I'm just going to hold this activation. Am I going to hold this activation? Well, maybe I want to be able to beat a tabernacle, in which case I could draw and find a land. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ancestral Recall. I don't know the answer. So the worst part about Ancestral is that it does draw them into Tabby. And, of course, any other things they want to draw. I don't know if I care about a Tabby too much, because I do have an extra Root Walla and a Vengevine. So maybe this is fine. I guess they could come and just go, like, Dark Ritual Doomsday with Flusterstorm or something. I'll let this happen. I don't know if it's right, though. Uh, well, I would rather have a, ment a Mind Break Trap than play around Tabby with a Root Walla, I think, so. This puts me at, what, 7 damage? Which is pretty good, because it stops Fetch Land. Does it actually stop fetch land in any reasonable world? Yeah, it stops fetch land on like the next turn. Like if they had to pass the turn, I could put them. Yeah. Uh, why not pitch negation? Yeah, I guess so. That makes sense, I guess. I don't know. I uh, just muscled it. I mean, if I pitch Force of Negation, it means they know that I have mind break, uh, Forcible Mind Break Trap, right? Uh, maybe not. Mm, maybe not. All right, so how do they win from here? Yeah, 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 I don't think you're wrong. I think having trap, nick trap, nick force is better than having trap negation force. The only time it's not better is if I ripped a blue card and I wanted to cast two forces. Right. If this if this vigor was a blue card, then having to act, access to two forces is better. Because now they're going to go for the consult kill, which actually is the problem, right? So this is not going to run into Mind Break Trap unless they have a counter spell. So I guess it's fine. I 
There's no reason to do anything else, right? I should just counter this. Or I guess I can let this resolve. I guess I could have D's. Okay. Well, trap doesn't doesn't matter if spells resolve or not. All right, they just went for they're just going for this kill, which we have unless they have double counter spell. We have this beat. Ha! <laughs> they had force of will as their counter spell. They had to have double days there. Main decked. I mean, there's a lot of people main decking needles and lanterns because they can get them with their sagas. But like there's sometimes you see decks that play Leyline of the Void as part of a combo. But those are kind of few and far between nowadays. That was pretty close for a matchup that is pretty pretty good for us, I would say. That was a very close set of games. Okay, round four now. Let's do it. That's a good one. We've had a couple like really nice sevens, um, like a bunch of really nice sevens. So I guess that makes up for the mulligan into one. I think I just, yeah, get max value here. All right, what you got, homie? I got nine power for free on turn one, and I'm going to draw two cards with my land next turn. Do I want to let them probe? I don't think so. I don't really want them to know that I have Mind Break Trap, to be honest. Obviously, this plays poorly into Island Ancestral Recall, but... <laughs> you know, small, small wins. Why are these things spinning? Animations is off. Ah, uh, yes, they had exactly Island Ancestral Recall. <sighs> Class PO. Do it. I think that's a trap target. Obviously, they could tinker, but their hand was very good. Uh, so this gets what them what? Force? What is this getting them? Dig? Paradoxical outcome. That's bad. <laughs> it's very bad. All right, well, I need another counter spell. Uh, their hand was very, very good. Good thing is I get to draw three cards, you know? It's always nice. Ooh, hello. This is nine damage. I have to keep a blue card no matter what, right? Yeah, that's fine. I could, like, keep Noxious and not play a hollow one. I don't think playing another hollow one actually plays around anything. I guess it could play around a single repeal. Like I'm gonna lose to Hercules is the biggest problem. All right, well I mean I have I have negate, so they have to have fluster or force here. So my opponent's hand was just very very good, and obviously I could have played around this by not casting. Uh, what? They're trying to find a force. Sure. Um, I could have like not mental misstepped probe, but then they would have just not cast. 
Actually, I don't know what they would have done. Maybe maybe it was my fault. Maybe I wasn't supposed to misstep probe. I kind of think that it looked like a good spot to misstep probe because I had a trap that I didn't want to show. But they should know that we have a force because we had a master of death not enter the graveyard a second time. All right, so how do I stop this from spinning? That's my next question. No, don't animate summoning sickness. Why is that turned on? Why are you going to be like this? Okay, so PO. We barely squeaked by PO there, but we are obviously completely pre boarded for PO in basically every conceivable way. Um, I think I'm just going to bring in a map back. What am I even going to bring in? A snapback or a surgical? Probably just a snapback for Sphinx, I guess. No, the spinning symbol on the cards is um, summoning sickness. You can turn off that animation. In fact, I recommend turning off all Magic Online animations because... Well. Because... This is a great hand against P.O. if I had a Bazaar of Baghdad. This is also a great hand against P.O. if I had a Bazaar of Baghdad. This is less good, but it has a Bazaar of Baghdad. So, you know, we take those. This is it. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. It's okay, I have the strip mine for there. Oh my god, why? Okay, fair, fair. You only have one of those. Maybe I should play P.O. <laughs> this is a taker. It's a mana vault. All right, I'm going to have Vigor in response to this. Tinker. No, I was joking! It was a joke! Sphinx, 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 Fuck. Oh, come on! This is ridiculous! This is the- this is the- this is- this is the best! This- this is- this is- this is the best! This is- this is the best! All right, fair enough. You got me. That was the best. Sometimes you have the best. Wait, wait. I should try that day. <laughs> yeah. Well then. That went bad. Oh, this hand's good though. This hand is good though. Keep, keep, keep. Those were not great draws. <laughs> Those were not great draws, though. Island Ancestral? Fuck, man. I don't think I'm going to fight over this. I think I'm just going to try to find hollow ones.
They could still cast Ancestral on my upkeep. I think fighting over that would be pretty bad. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, look how look how much look how much better this one. Uh yeah, if I have a chance that I want to keep my wastelands or bazaars. Well, that's not always true, right? A second bazaar can be drawing cards if I'm getting squeeze. Like, I can't ever cast a Vengevine, so that I could have held it and then had a Vigor. This is true. Um, and, like, in this situation, maybe it is true. And maybe I should have held the Vine, but I don't think it's always true. So, the nice part about Hollow Vine sometimes is that it doesn't actually care about this Lantern sometimes when you, like, play these free creatures... So I still have Force, I still have Hollow Ones, I still have a Clock, and I don't actually care that they have a Lantern because I don't have anything in my yard. I definitely could, would be a lot happier if I had a Vengevine instead of this Wasteland, so Lynn's definitely right in that sense. Are you going to play Tinker with Force, with, oh my god, with Flusterstorm and Backup? Okay, spinning for force. So, yeah, I guess this is an instance where maybe pitching my Vengevine lost me the game. That could be a case. If this draws for... Well, it didn't happen. If this had drawn and found on a force, and they had gone Citadel, it would have mattered. But... That didn't happen, so... Small victories. That's a good draw. Yeah, I mean, that does seem like a misplay when you look back at it. Because I don't really need a second bazaar in this current situation. Um, I mean, I still can't beat a Sphinx with this hand, but I think that's fine. Definitely not going to activate bazaar because it doesn't get me anywhere. Not playing with Gaia's Cradle does mean I don't have ways to pump my Root Walla, which is kind of annoying. But I could, of course, hit Sapphire Lantern at their end step there. But I don't really feel like that's a good play. I don't remember ever pushing a PO list with this many Lanterns in it. So it must be somebody else's. So if this root wall changed the clock, I would consider activating here. But it doesn't, so I'm not going to. However, I will activate on this turn because I could draw a hollow one, which would change the clock. It would be lethal. Um, typically P.O. does not play Tabernacle, but I have played Tabernacle in my P.O. decks in the past, so I guess I will play this Wasteland out. I was holding Wasteland before because I wanted to be able to pitch it, but at this point, I don't think it matters anymore. I think that if I'm not guaranteeing a lethal attack that pitching root walla is bad because force of vigor is more powerful would be my evaluation of that um in, in legacy you're gonna register fast bond is that is that even legal <laughs> uh I don't think there are any good fast bond decks. I actually think green white depths is like not unreasonable, but um it's kind of annoying with all the main deck needles running around.
three basic islands. Dig. Good one. Okay, I mean, observing is part of learning, so. They're not bad questions, and they help everybody else identify things as well, so not a big deal. Or kind of a big deal, just it didn't the other way. Ancestral, that's a good one. I'm not like... I'm not even, I don't even, I'm not even sure we're favored from right here, honestly. I'm not sure we're favored from this situation. It's quite possible that this is like a 50-50 game. Why would you activate top? To draw a Lotus Tinker? Why, uh, it has to be Lotus Tinker. The only reason you would activate top here is to draw Lotus Tinker when you've already hit your land drop. Oh, Tinker's exiled. What are they doing then? Lotus Yog? Alright, I, 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 if, if Tinker was in their deck, I would cast Vigor here, but Tinker's not in their deck, so... I'm letting this happen. Don't exactly know what that accomplished. Well, I have a lot of lethal attackers. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Kill me. Ass Sphinx? Lotus? Lotus fetch land, maybe? Lotus fetch sea Sphinx? We have drawn not very many counter magics. Like, we had our counter magic, which was very important. Our counter magic countered Tinker. But after that, we have no counter magics. They've drawn a lot of Soul Guide Lanterns, which I don't really... I haven't actually cared much about. Don't see what they're doing to get out of this one now. I think that's going to be it. Leagues have been extremely blue heavy. I've played like very. I shouldn't have said anything. I shouldn't have said anything. I should not have said anything. I guess I should have hitched top there. Oh. I already cast Time Walk, too. Alright, F6. I don't know why opponent didn't activate top first. They have to hit really well. They have to hit, like, Mana Crypt, Opal, PO. Which is possible. Sure. I have a list. Uh... You want me to click through my attacks? Not happening. All right. Another blue victim. Fallen. 
to the evil viners. Sweet. Okay, here we are in the fifth and final round of this Hollow Vine League. Uh, we're currently up. What do we have? We've got three blue decks. Why can't I figure out what I'm doing? Streamer, streamer. We've beaten three blue decks and lost to one blue deck splashing oath. So let's see what we can do in our fifth and final round here. We can powder our way our seven. And we can powder away our seven. And we can powder away our seven. And we can mulligan our seven. Uh, and we can keep our six. Bless. <laughs> I've never powdered so many sevens. So what am I missing from my deck? I am missing one Vengevine, three forces, two traps, two vigors, one Rootwalla, two master, second Rootwalla. Uh, I'm going to get rid of second Bazaar because I have a Noxious anyways, I think. Uh, I have had hands where I have powder, I have mulligan instead of powder. Those normally involve, like, three hollow ones or something. Uh, you don't do it too often. But I have, I have definitely mulliganed hands instead of powdering. I don't think any of those hands were ones of, was, was, like, they were a mix of different kinds of spells. Alright, so we hit a squee, a trap. I'm just going to play out my cards and hope it's good enough. A classic. A classic Justin Maneuver. All right, what are we playing against? Urza's Saga. Well, I have a good answer for that. Needle on Bazaar. I don't have a good answer for that. Uh, yeah. All right. That is certainly the downside to playing uh, Bazaar of Baghdad in an Urza Saga format. Is people have main deck needles and they're not afraid to use them. The good news is I can loop wastelands. So there are some I didn't need another one probably. I have a four turn clock and I have looping wastelands and I have a mind break trap in case they combo kill me. So it's not the end of the world. But it is annoying. It is annoying. I worked so hard to get this bazaar. I I exiled 21 cards to get to this bazaar. How dare you just turn it off with one needle. One wrong art needle. Ugh. Revivals aren't bad because some of the, the, the best way to stop your deck is to kill the Bizarre Baghdad with a Wasteland. Uh, but bizarre, well, Revivals are not great right now because... Um, it's better as a defensive card than an offensive card. Uh, Jesus... Uh, hmm. Okay. So they played a land that is both not wastelandable and they played ancestral. Um, yeah. I am just going to draw naturally so I can maybe draw a force. Two of my vigors are gone, two of my negations are gone, and one of my will is gone. Draw a hollow one. I don't have very much going for me right now. I'll put that, let's put it that way. Yeah, Revival is actually like a relatively new tech in the history of Hollowvine. Originalists did not play it, but it turned out like returning your bazaar is really good. And also this pitches the Force of Vigor. And also, you can tempo your opponent out, and this deck is, like, very tempo-oriented. Blue, black, demonic. I mean, yeah. 
I mean, I'm going to get tinkered, yeah? Lotus, I assume. This is not a top deck tutor. This is the first decks. Uh, there was definitely a time where Noxious Revival was not a four of in Holovine. I'm almost sure we can look at during sideboarding. But I definitely remember times where Noxious Revival was not a four of in Holovine. Uh, yeah, but what am I putting back? Am I putting back a Saga, an Ancestral, a Demonic? I guess I can put back a Saga, but I don't know if that's actually a good idea. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put back a Wasteland and hit them with a Wasteland instead. I guess I theoretically could put their Underground Sea back on top. But I think this is going to get forced, and then I'm going to put another wait. No, it did not get forced. Okay. I'm going to wasteland you. All right. Well, they have to kill me this next turn, and they can't really Citadel me. So I'm not 100% sure how we're dying. I don't think I'm supposed to put this C on top of their library. Hmm. I could do that if they, like, go for, like, a draw spell combo after playing a land, but, like, they probably have another land. Well, maybe I am. Maybe I am. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I think you definitely would put C over Saga. Okay, so they're going to go for a combo kill here. Okay. Yeah. And then what? And then what? P.O.? Sure looks like blue-black P.O. Well, if we assume that my opponent demonic for Lotus, which I don't think is an unreasonable assumption because Tinker isn't going to get the job done, then putting a demonic back on top is... Not the most useful play. So it is Citadel. Interesting. So they drew Citadel. No, they have Yagwell. Fuck. Uh, okay, so if, what if I put back Ancestral Recall? And then if they don't have another... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if they, I put back Ancestral Recall and they don't have another draw spell? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get your Ancestral Recall. What say you? That's fine. If they demonic for it, that's a win for us. Because this is bait. Didn't work. I could also demonic... Yeah. Okay. They played Lotus, Mana Vault, Yagwell. P.O. for three. Then they draw an Ancestral. So maybe that was bad. P.O. for two? You're drawing an... Okay, I think I may have made a mistake with my Noxious Revival. I may have gamed it too hard. They have to hit Opal and P.O. combo here. It was bait. I thought they had force. Maybe it wasn't good enough bait. 
The the idea was I played Noxious Revival. It's good enough to stop them. They force my Noxious Revival, and then I trap the stack. That's what I was thinking. However, if my Noxious Revival is not good enough to stop a, a, the Yagwell anyways, then it's kind of just moot point, and the Noxious Revival doesn't do anything. So I don't think it matters that much. If the Noxious Revival is doing nothing against uh, Yagwell there, then I think the Noxious Revival is never doing anything. So... Anyways, anyways. All right, we're playing against PO again, and we're pre-boarded. We just move Fury out, and we move Snap back in. While we wait, we're gonna go see if um our friend uh, ZZ, ZZ Dane is correct, and let's find out together because this is a powerful a powerful tool that people should be using. Search Vintage over the last. Two years for decks that have Vengevine, Squee, uh, and Hollow One. And then go back to the Wayback Machine here. Here's the first Honchobi list. Might not actually be the first Honchobi list. I might have to go back farther. Let me just go back 19 here. Even if the first Honchobi list doesn't have, or does have Rock Survival, I don't think that exactly proves your point, though. I'm not saying, like, the very first list. I'm saying there were stretches of time where they didn't. Wow, it goes all the way back to, oh, this is going to hit Survival, isn't it? Fuck, it's going to hit survival. All right, I need to do something else. Let me submit this. Yeah, you can search any period of time that has Magic Online deck lists. Um, what's another card that it would, it would only that would only exist? Force of Will? That's not exactly true. Um, serum Powder. I don't know if Serum Powder was in all the original lists either. Can I filter out? Oh, zero? Maybe I can do zero survivals. I've actually never used the zero function on this. So I'm not sure how well it works. Yeah, you can't use the zero function. Um... I guess we're going to have to do serum powder. And hope that there was originally serum powders. All right. So first Honcho Bay list has four Noxious Revivals. You are correct. Now, was there points in time that didn't have four Noxious Revivals? I swear there were. Yeah. So like already you're starting to see lists that don't have any Noxious Revivals. Montolio list with no Noxious Revivals, Once Upon a Time, Sphinx of Foresight. Yeah, so in the end, I would give us both correct. You are right, the very first Holovine list from Hanjobi did have four Noxious Revivals, but I'm also right, there are periods in time, and I think very large swaths in time, where there were zero Noxious Revivals. Like, I'm looking at, like, this is pages of deck lists that I think all of these ones here don't have Noxious Revivals. And that's like seven months later, so we'll uh, we'll split it fifty fifty. How's that sound, Dane? Four in the board. Anyways, let's continue. Um, no bizarre kind of mulligan. Yeah, yeah, it's a me it was meta dependent. I think at this point, like your green count. Need, like it's this thing. It's more about green count at this point. It's I think Noxious Revival is just a better card than Once Upon a Time. So Noxious Revival has more utility and does more for you than Once Upon a Time. I think there was definitely a, a series of of times where people were trying out whether that was better or not. Here's an interesting question. I think I'm actually gonna get rid of a Root Walla because Wasteland hits Saga. 
Yeah, I think Noxious is greater than Endurance as well. I don't actually think Endurance is very good in, in Vine. It's okay. You can definitely play it. I think Endurance is more of a sideboard card than anything. Endurance not being hard castable is like really problematic. Though technically you could maybe hard cast it if you played Gaius Cradle, but all right, maybe we're just going to die on turn one here because I have nothing that interacts with this. Tinker, kill me. Oh. You got it, homie. Uh, I don't know. I think Force of Vigor was in those original lists, but I could be wrong. When did Force of Vigor get printed? That was a Modern Horizons 1, right? Yeah, Force of Vigor was printed in, like, 2019. So Force of Vigor was printed for the entire existence of Olivine. Okay, so the nice thing is this didn't hit my Master of Death. Um, and they didn't hit a land drop, so... I feel okay about our spot in life. Nice. So I'm just going to go Master, Root Walla, Wasteland, Hold Open Vigor, play a Chalice. Yeah, this looks really good. It, I do enjoy the fact that Lavinia is not seeing a large amount of play anymore. Lavinia was a very annoying card to exist in the format. Okay, all of that resolved, which makes me think about vigoring, but... I might Vigor Jet. I really, yeah, I, I dislike it, Lavinia. I wonder if I should just hit both mana sources, because I have an answer to Saga. And they don't have any blue mana for Pio. This could be considered greedy, but I think it makes sense. How dare you pass the turn, opponent? I will make you pay for that. Like, I don't think I would make this play if I didn't have a Wasteland, because then they could just have top deck Saga and Saga get Vault Key kill me. But I'll definitely take that. So we actually just played against mono blue decks, not actually just mono blue, but like five blue decks. And we beat all the ones that didn't splash Oath uh, with our Holovine deck, which is, you know, that's kind of par for the course. That's exactly what you expect. This is a deck that preys on blue combo decks that are not playing Wasteland. Uh, so the deck worked exactly as intended. Uh, we didn't really get to ever use our Fury in the main because we didn't play against like Mono White or Bug or anything like that. So we didn't get to do much of anything <laughs> besides the the main game plan, which is fine. Uh, I don't really think like I learned anything super about this list besides the fact that I think the idea of not playing Gaia's Cradle looks good to me. Or not playing Gaia's Cradle in the main definitely seems like an idea that that has some merit i don't know what the exact configuration of your 75 should be it's not something that i'm super in tune with i'm gonna have to ask some some experts probably but this doesn't seem too too far off and definitely a choice if you think you're gonna run into a bunch, bunch of blue decks my concern would be if you don't run into blue decks how is this deck gonna fare you have a nice sideboard plan against Dredge, but you're obviously not favored in game one. Um, but you might be favored in the match up total. I would say that there can be problems against playing versus bizarre, uh, shops. But I, I don't understand why you want to play Gra Grave Troll in this deck. I don't understand what you think it does for the deck. Like milling cards into your graveyard is not really the goal of this deck. It's kind of, it, it, like, you do put cards in your graveyard, and you could hit more Squeeze and Venge Vines, but I, I, that's not really what you're trying to do. If you were trying to build, like, a version that plays Gak, like the old um, Hazar lists, then I could see you would want to play one Gak, one, one, um, you play one Gak, 
one Golgari Grave Troll, four Bloodgast. You can do that. You can make decks like that. But I think that's just worse than playing either Gak or a, a 12 counter build, 13 counter build. You don't have a lot of room here to play around with things. Like you could cut the Fury and play it. But I don't think the Troll by itself is good. I think the Troll is good when you have like four more Bloodgasts to hit. And like a Gak you can hit. So like if you can find room for six cards, then sure, I'm down. But if you don't have that, like you could go... Down a Mindbreak Trap, down a Mindbreak Trap, down a Fury, down a two Noxious, and one, two, three, four, five, down a Vigor, and then boom, you have six slots to play Grave Troll, Gak, four Bloodgast, but that also makes your deck weaker to Graveyard Hate, where you saw us beat tons of Graveyard Hate. We played against a lot of Soul Guide Lanterns, where we just played Hollow One Root Walla and killed them in four turns. So I think the nice part about this deck is that it's not super reliant on the Graveyard, it is relying on the graveyard because you do have your your bizarre engine and your vengevine, but I don't think it's like all in on the graveyard. So, yeah, in general, I just think that this set of cards are the cards you want to play in your squee squee deck, and I don't really see a, a compelling reason to change that. I think it's more about like what do you do with your two or three flex slots, and what do you can do with your cyborg configuration. So. I I don't know. If you're like dredging and then reviving something on top, it just seems kind of slow. But I mean, there's definitely some merit in that play for sure. So, all right. That's enough for me. If you made it all the way in this video on YouTube, you're awesome. Did I ever tell you that? Are you subscribed to my channel? Then you'd be double awesome. I hope you're double awesome. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>